This kind of styling can get super tricky real quick. But it turns out there's a better way to pull this off. So here we have a list of fields. We have basic, we have monospaced, we have a field with left and right icons, we have a compact field, a compact field with icons, read-only, disabled, and a field with error. Now these fields are rendered using the same form input component. What makes them different is the combination of props we pass in. If I scroll down to the template, you'll see I make all kinds of checks to decide what Tailwind classes to apply. For example here, where we have this left icon, if compact is true, then the icon needs to be a bit smaller. Then on the input, we have even more conditionals. Some are easy, but others are quite hard to follow. Here, for example, if we have a left icon and it's also compact, the left padding should be 7. If we only have the left icon, the padding should be 8, otherwise it should be 2. And then we do the same for the right icon. Now, based on your design, this kind of styling can get super tricky real quick. But it turns out there's a better way to pull this off. And that is Tailwind CSS Custom Variants. This feature is amazing. What it does is it lets you write your own custom selector modifiers. As an example, we have a list where we use a custom variant to underline the third element in the list. Let's try that out in Tailwind Play. Here we have a div with data error set to true, and what I want to do is set the background to red. So here I do class, and we'll have brackets for arbitrary values. We'll use ampersand, which represents the current selector, and then we'll have data error equals true. And here we can do bg red 400. And there we go. Now, writing variants like this is a bit awkward, but we can create a plugin and give them names. If I go back here, we have this creating a plugin section. I'll grab the require, go to the config file, paste it in. Let's also get the example. Paste that in. And here what we need to do is basically give it a name, let's say error. And then here we'll have and brackets data error equals true. Now I can go back to my HTML and instead of this, we'll say error bg red 400. And there we go. Now this doesn't work for child elements. So here if we do something like div and let's say class error bg green 300, this won't work. What we need to do is go back and this also takes in an array. So I'll turn this into an array and also do data error equals true and then add the ampersand here. And there we go. If we go to the generated CSS tab, we'll see that we have an error bg red data error true class. And then we also have the reverse where data error is the parent and error bg red 400 is the child. Now let's go back to our form input and implement any custom variants we need. The first thing I'm going to do is add the data attributes. So I'll grab all these, go to the root element, paste them in, and then I'll add data. And here we'll have props and paste those in. Here and here we'll have dashes and icon. And now compact is a boolean prop, disabled is a boolean prop, error is a string, so let's convert it to boolean. Left and right icon are objects, so let's convert them to booleans. And monospaced is a boolean. Now I'll open the Tailwind config file paste the soon-to-be variants in, go in the browser to grab the required statement, paste that in. Let's also grab the example. Paste it in. And here, instead of duplicating this for each variant, I'll convert this into an array and loop through it. So I'll do array, paste those in, We'll have for each and variant. And here we'll replace error with variant. 
and then we'll replace these with tactics so we can do variant and this should work here we should have left dash icon and right dash icon and i think we're good to go let's start using them i'll scroll down and here we have props compact this is our default so let's grab it paste it in and then on compact we'll do width 4.5 and the same for the height If I refresh, scroll down, this is our compact with icons field. If I remove this, the icon will grow. If I put it back in, it will be smaller. For monospaced, we have font sans as default and font mono when it's monospaced. So let's remove this, go here, paste the default in, and then we'll have monospaced font mono. And here it is. Then we have py2 as default, and then compact py1. For disabled, we have border 2, border gray 200, and then we do disabled, border transparent. Let's remove this, and here's our disabled field. For error, we have border red, so I'll grab the default, paste it in, and then error, border red 400. Refresh, and here it is. But now, as you can see, when we focus, the border is still red, even though it should be blue. We can combine the variants, we can do error, and then focus, and then border blue 400. Refresh, and here it is. Now for left icon and compact, we can do left icon, compact, PL7. If we only have the left icon, we can do left icon, PL8. Otherwise the default is PL2. And of course, it's the same for the right icon. So let's turn this into PX2. And then I'll copy this. We'll have right icon, PR8. And here we'll have right icon, PR7. And we can remove this. Finally, we have the X icon. This appears when we type something in. We'll do class. The default is with 5, H5. And then we'll have compact with 4.5 and H4.5. And this is the right icon, which is basically the same as this one. And we're good to go, I think. Let's refresh and check them out. Here we have the basic field, monospaced with icons, compact, Compact with icons, read only, disabled, and with error. So let's revisit the whole thing one more time. In our Tailwind config file, we created a plugin that adds new variants. The add variant function takes in a variant name and an array of selectors. The way I define the variants is based on this data attribute. Then inside the component, we can set the data attributes with their values, and then start using the new variants to style the component in different ways. The major win we get out of this is that we can stack variants, and that means we no longer have to deal with complex conditionals that are tricky to get right. Very useful if you ask me. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff.